everybody. Welcome to The Bottom Line. We are so happy that you would join us today. We're going to be talking to you about some things that are, are pretty much important to everybody. Everybody in your everyday Christian life. That's right. You know, in Romans 12, that was it the message translation that talked about your everyday Christian life? And it talked about in that very first verse in Romans 12, it talked about your rising up. You're laying down. Yeah. You're going on your way. Everything, every part of your day, you know, we we want to. We know that God is concerned with us. That's right. Every every aspect of our life. And so, every aspect. And so, what we're going to be talking about is attitude. And we've we've done one program about this, and we were we were exploring ideas about you know what makes people have certain attitudes and. And we, we discovered questions that we could even ask ourselves and, and find out, well, where am I in this? And why am I thinking like this? And at, at the end of it, we were talking about how, or at the beginning, we were talking about how important it is to have a positive attitude in life. Because, you know, we, I, I, and I mentioned how we used to watch Charles Stanley and he preached a message called Attitude Determines Altitude. altitude yeah. And so anyway, no matter where you are in life, you're going somewhere. And if you want it to, to end up well, your attitude is key. That's it's right. really, really important. It's hard to work with somebody who has a bad attitude. That's right. And but, I know that's true because a lot of times I have a bad attitude. But, so. you know, I mean, the, the thing that we're, when we're talking about attitude, the thing that, that we're centering up here uh, uh, today is, is uh, be, be, being judgmental. That's really what we're centering up on. Are we still going to yeah. be centering up on that? Yeah, and it's, it's you know, it's, and it, and it is that it's, it's easy to be judgmental. Well, it is. It's, yeah. We all like to put on our robe and walk into the courtroom and That's right. point out, you know, and, you know, it may be that you don't ever say anything to the person that you're being judgmental of, but the attitude that we're having about it, it will come back to you. Here, let's, Needs let's, to go away. Let's go with our scripture that we started with, I think it was last week. Okay. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Judge not that you be not judged. For with the, what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Now, you know, the, the thing that he's talking about here about judging mm -hmm. is that you don't actually have to say it to somebody. You can just, you know, you can be judgmental and never say a word. Yeah, well, that's what I said a while ago. You may never say anything, but your attitude that's is... Right is being formed and that's not good that you have that kind of an attitude. That's right. And that's that's a hard thing. It is a hard thing. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, the thing is, we're, you know, as, as believers, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm -hmm. And there's not one of us that has not missed the mark at some time or another. Isn't that true? That's true. And so, you know, you, you shouldn't be judgmental about somebody that has missed the mark. The, the thing that you would want to do is ask God to give you a word to give them to help them, right? But we know that, the, that uh, you know, the Bible does teach that we're supposed to help one another. Mm -hmm. We talked about that last week. Yeah, Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. So if I'm going to come... If, if, if you're overtaking, you know, if you've committed this sin, whatever, and, and, and if I come to you, okay? Okay. And I'm, and I'm wanting to help you, I'm supposed to come in the spirit of gentleness. I'm not supposed to come, well, Susan, blah, 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 blah. That's not, that's, you're you not going to receive that. <laughs> you're not going to receive that. But if I come to you and say, Susan, I just, I'd like to talk to you for just a minute. I've just, I've kind of noticed uh, this, that, and the other. And so, you know, I just, I'm just coming to you and, what can I do to help work help you work through this? And you see what I'm saying? There's all the difference in the world from me coming with that attitude and me coming with attitude. Well, you know, my 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 my, right? Mm-hmm. 
So that's what we want to do. We want to come in the spirit of gentleness. Okay. That's right. Uh, we were talking about some things last week. Uh, you know, and, and we I think we stopped where it says life is filled with problems that have no solutions. Okay. And here's but here's what Paul said about that. Taking Corinthians chapter four. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death, to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also be made manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace having spread through many cause, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. So, you know, everybody in life has problems. Mm -hmm. different problems, different degrees of the same problem, but everybody, everybody does. Everybody does. That's but right. But there is an answer for all of them. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus and the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, you know, I, I used to say for every natural problem, there is a supernatural answer. And you are correct. And I think that's right. You know, but however, I noticed that in here, in this passage that you just read, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 15, mm -hmm. that he talked about a spirit of faith. Yes. And without the spirit of faith, then the supernatural answers are going to be hard to find. Yes, they are. you got to have right. a spirit of faith. Well, and, and two, uh, uh, what we talked about a few weeks ago about uh, uh, seeking first the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, the, the, the problems are going to come. You don't have to believe for them or Whatever. Oh, really? They're yeah, just I mean, going to it, be called, there. It's called life. They're just going to be there. It's called life. Yeah. But but that spirit of faith will see us through those problems and over on top of those problems. Right? That's true. Yep. So that's the reason we have to have it. Okay. Another thing is, it's too dangerous to be happy. Mm -hmm. You know, have you ever seen it? Well, you can't be happy. I, I can't be happy cause, because next week doesn't so. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people have that attitude. I like what Art Linkletter said, though. He said, things usually turn out best for those who make the best of the way things turn out. And he's right. Yeah, so again, you know, like, like you said, you know, people sometimes draw back from happiness because, you know, that, well, I'm not going to get my hopes up because I know that's not, you know. Mm -hmm. But see, you know, really, we need to, we need to, um, Pick up the spirit of faith on that. That's right. You know, I don't remember who who made this quote. I, I just don't said said whether you believe you can or you can't. You're right. Oh yeah, yeah. It's because it's all about your attitude. It's all about your attitude. What do you believe? That's right. Yeah. That is all about that. Yeah. It's all about that. Okay. Now Jesus said this. This is in Matthew chapter nineteen twenty six. Okay. And He's talking to his disciples and he says, with men, he's talking about going through the eye of a needle. Is that what he's talking about? Mm -hmm. This is impossible. And then he said, but with God, all things are possible. Is that what he was talking all about All things day? are possible. Yeah. Is that what he was talking about? I, I really don't remember. With all men, this God. is impossible. I can't remember what he was talking but about. But with God, with God, all things are all possible. Things are possible. You know, Romans 8, 31. What should we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Who can be against you? That's right. And what well, does it matter? Well, because it, if God is for us, yeah. you know, but again, you got to, if that's your belief. That's right. That's right. See, if that's your attitude. Yeah, that's right. Okay, let me, let me read this story. I like this story. Okay. The story is told of twins who were raised by an abusive alcoholic father. The older of the two grew up and became not only a loving father and husband, but also mayor of his town. The younger of the twins became an angry drunk who spent much of his life disturbing the peace and serving time in jail. One day a reporter came to town to interview the two men. When the reporter asked the men 
why each one had become who he was, both men replied, My father. The older twin insisted that because he had not judged his father, he was able, he was able uh, to, to do his, keep his father, not do his father's mistakes to keep him out of trouble. The younger tw twin insisted that because his father had been such a cruel and angry man, he was doomed to repeating his father's mistakes. Both, isn't that amazing? Both of them had the same answer, mm -hmm. but from two totally different perspectives. Well, see, you know, we, we know people, <clears throat> and I'm sure you know people, and, and you can look at the circumstances that life has dealt mm -hmm. to them, and you could think, man, how can that person ever, and yet they just seem to just flourish and just everything has to do with that attitude. It has to do with your attitude, that's right. Yeah, you can't, you know, just like this. These boys had every reason to to um, have a lot of resentment toward their dad, you know, because it was wrong the way they were treated. That's right, yes. But one yes. of them was able to say to himself, you know, I'm just, you know, he just didn't judge him for it. He just didn't hold, you know, he just didn't. That's right. And the other one did, and look how that turned out. That's, you know, there's a lesson to be learned there, you know, because, it, again, you know, I remember once we, we taught a series of messages about at the end of the day, it's all about your heart. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about your attitude. We're talking about your heart and what do you believe in. And, you know, at, at the end of it, what will you do? Well, you can't change that person in your life that's a drunk. You can't do it. Only God could ever, ever come to their rescue. And, you know, as soon as we can understand that and realize that all the criticism we have in our lives about it and all the, you know, reasons we know that they're wrong, as soon as we can just let all that go and just say, hey, you know what, I'm just going to let, I'm just going to turn this situation, I'm just going to put it in God's hands and I'm going to trust Him with it. And then you just let that go. And then, you know, you could have this this in your life. You could be the person that comes out as the mayor of the town right. and, instead of the one that became, drunk, you know, a drunk like his dad. Right. And, and we're not saying that this is easy. I, we're not, we're not, not making easy. light of it at all. But we're saying this is what can be done. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. All right, let's, talk, let's look at some confessions that can change our life. Okay. okay. Number one, yes, I can believe. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> Yeah. But it's all, it's all about what, what do you believe. Yeah, but just the fact that you can, yeah, that's right. that you can have the ability, you know, with, within you, you have the ability. You have, you can, you can. That's right. You know, that, that's, if uh, you want to. You know, that, when we were growing up, there was the, 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 the story or whatever about the little train that, that could. Good, you know, yeah. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And here's a scripture, Mark chapter 9, verse 24. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. I'm believing as good as I can. Mm -hmm. So you think the Lord helped his unbelief? I, well, he did. Because we he know he did. His, he healed his child. We know he did. That's right, right. He did. Okay, and then, of course, the classic scripture about this is in Hebrews 11. And it says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I mean, that's pretty plain, isn't it? Yeah. Here's what the Message Bible says. It's impossible to please God apart from faith. And why? Because anyone who wants to approach God must believe both that he exists and that he cares enough to respond to those who seek him. Mm-hmm. He's going to respond to you. Yeah. Well, see, you know, the way I, I really like the way it's written in that King James Version about believe that he is and a rewarder of those who seek him. It, well, not, that's not what it said. It said those who diligently Yeah, it seek does him. say diligently. That doesn't mean, you know, okay, I'm going to do it today and mm -hmm. I may do it again next week. Ah, oh, I may do it next month. No, talking about diligent. Mm -hmm. That means every day. I'm seeking God's plan for my life. Every day. Every day. Yeah. But I just liked the way it was worded there. That is good. Yeah. All right. Yes, I can change. Mm-hmm. 
Why don't you read that in 2 Corinthians? Okay, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Is it verse, what is that, 18? Yes. It says, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. But you notice there it says being changed or transformed. Mm -hmm. That means changed. It does. Change. You can change. change. Yeah. Well, you know, my daddy was this way, my grandpa was this way, and his brothers were this way, and and but but you don't have to be. Yeah. You can change. Mm -hmm. You can change, right? That's right. There's hope. I like the Passion Translation. Beloved friends, what should be our response to God's marvelous mercies? I encourage you to surrender yourselves to God to be His sacred living sacrifices and live in holiness experiencing all that delights his heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. But I like that, that part of that sentence there, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit, through a total reformation of how you think. Of how you think. That all goes back to attitude, doesn't it? Well, you know, you stop and think about this. People, it, it does, attitude. You know, have you ever heard people say, well, I'm just a nobody, I'm just blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you just need to change what you think. That's not what God thinks. Mm -hmm. God thinks that you're more than a conqueror. God thinks that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I, I mean, I, we can go through scripture after scripture after scripture of, of how, what God thinks about you. And it just, just looks to me like we ought to think the same things about ourselves that he thinks about us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so we're talking about confessions that we can make to change our outlook, to change our That's attitude. Right. Yeah. And the uh -huh. first one was... Say, I can believe. I can not believe, yeah. That's the first thing we need to do. And then the second one is, yes, I can change. I can change. <laughs> yes, I can. Yeah. I can do it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have to be like this. Mm -hmm. I do not have to be like this. I can change. And, you know, you and I, over the last long time, have witnessed that for a fact because we have changed. Yeah, th these, these attitudes of the heart... <clears throat> would be the most difficult things to change. You know, like, you, it's not so hard to change outwardly. You know, like, I can go to the gym, and I can start exercising, and I can really pay attention to what I eat, and I can change everything how I look. But this part, this hidden, this heart inside me, is it would be more difficult because it's got to take such a concentration of, of renewing your mind. You know, that's what it said in Romans was to renew your yeah. mind. And that's that's the only way this attitude is ever going to change is that that you make a conscious effort. And then, you know, like you, you pointed out, you, this is a diligent thing. This is something you have to do every day. Every day. You know, but but it's very doable. It is doable. If you do it. Yes, yeah. it is. But, Yeah. Okay, so you just need to say, yes, I can change, and then go after it. That's right. Then the third one is, I can love and be loved. You know, there's people today that would be even watching right now thinking, you know, love passed me by. Nobody ever loved me. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever cared for me. I never loved anybody, you know. But actually, a, a new commandment is what, we have in John chapter 13 I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another so what he's saying here is we can do it right and you know Jesus talks so much about this love you know about about the I mean it's it's an amazing thing there's nothing like love it's so everlasting it's so eternal you know we have so many things in this life that are just so temporary and they're just over with and gone. But love, you know, like, like my, my parents. Man, I adored my parents. And I'm sure that, you know, most people, you know, if you have good parents, you do. But, you know, they don't live forever. No. But the love that I have for them, I still have. Mm -hmm. Even though they're absent in body, 
I still have that. You know, that the there's something about love that is just so it's it's transforming to your life. You know, and it and it's like an encouragement to you every day. You know, even even when those people have have gone, maybe tragically, maybe not, maybe just lived out their lives and gone. You still have that love. Well, you know, there's two. There's people that God brings across your path in life, mm -hmm. and and you know, it, it may be for a season, and then they're gone. Right. And not not necessarily dying, but just gone. But you still have a love for them. Right. And here in Romans it says. Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. And so, you know, when you stop and think about this, and, and maybe you've lived a lonely life, and maybe maybe you don't even have a lot of friends, or maybe maybe no family close at all, but the love of God trumps all of that. You know, when, when you take the Bible... At, at its word and you believe that Jesus himself actually came into this earth to rescue you. He did. Mm -hmm. He came to do that just for you. You know, there is no love like that. The Bible says greater love has no man than he lay down his life for his friend. That's what Jesus did for us. Yes. There's no love ever no. equal to that. So, so none of us can say we've never been loved, you know, even though, you know, here on this earth we might think well we hadn't had too many love encounters but that's the greatest one that's true that's true and you know the the, the bible you know we we talked about sowing we did and whatever you sow that's is what, what you're you... going to reap so if we sow love mm -hmm. what's going to come back to us it's going to come back that's right so mm -hmm. maybe we ought to consider that so, you know, this is a, a good attitude to have, you know, about life is that, you know, maybe, maybe I didn't have the romantic things that I thought I would. And maybe I never did have the family that I thought I'd have. But Jesus loves me. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I can forgive and be forgiven. To me, this, this right here is the biggest stumbling block in the lives of Christians mm -hmm. to me. This, this yeah. is it. Forgive and be forgiven. And you know, this is what uh, one of our friends calls this the powerhouse of the church mm -hmm. is this forgiveness. That's a key. That's such a... That's right. You know, and the, and the thing about forgiveness is so many times people think, well, you just go ahead and apologize. I'll forgive you. But you don't have to have an apology. That's right. You don't have, that's not a requirement. It's, again, this is an attitude. That's right. I'm going to just let that go. I'm not going to, I'm not going to nurse it. I'm not going to rehearse it. I'm just going to let it go. Let it go. That's right. Let yeah, it here's, go. Well, here's what I think is a good thing about forgiveness. You know, um, Let's just say, for instance, you do something really terrible to me, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, and so, I in my in my mind, I say, I'm, I I forgive Susan. Well, at that moment, you did. That at that moment, I forgave you, and that should be a dead issue. That's right. You just you just snipped the chains That's and right. you let it go. But what happens next week, next month? next year you do something similar to that mm -hmm. well if my response is well do you remember oops well then that means that i really didn't forgive it because if you forgive something it's gone you, it's not going it will never be brought up again you, th you think about this when when you uh the bible says that you know the, the the moment you and i were born again that god forgave all of our sin mm -hmm. So let's say, for instance, now it's a, it's a year later, five years later, ten years later, and and and, and you did something, and you got that, 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 and God says, "Well, do you remember when?" Now, do you think God would ever do that? The answer is no, because it says that He takes our sins and He puts them in the sea of forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. He chooses not to remember them anymore, and that's what you and I have to do, as far as forgiveness goes. 
We have to choose to forget it. Mm-hmm. That's right. I mean, it's, it's just that simple. We as have to far as to the east is from uh, the that's west. Right. That's right. That's right. All right. Let's do this one right quick. I, I think this one's also important. Yes, I can rule my thought life. Okay. Can you rule your thought life? All right, right here. I, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 2. But I beg you that when I am present, I may not, I may be, may not be bold with that con- confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not, do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing every thought into the captivity through the obedience of Christ. Every what? Thought. Thought. Mm -hmm. Every thought. In other words, and you and I are the only ones that can control what we think. Okay, but do you remember when you thought and I thought that you had no control over That's your right. thoughts? Yes, I do. I do remember that. Until until I saw this scripture and, and heard um, Joel Osteen's dad wrote a little book about it. Yes. I didn't know. I didn't know. Right. You know, when, when the thought would float through, it just never occurred to me that, you don't have to take that. Uh, don't do not you have to take it. You can throw. You can cast that thought aside. What you have to do is you have to replace it with something else. Mm-hmm. So what you do is you, when that thought comes, you replace it with, well, this is what the Bible says. Yeah. Is that right? Well, that is I mean, right. We can, you know, yeah. we, we can control our own thought life. Yeah. See, if it's of me sitting here thinking about, well, you're so bad at it, I can sit here and think about how wonderful you are. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Yeah. You get you can control what you think about someone else. Mm-hmm. Right? You can. Okay. You sure can. This is gonna help your heart. That's right. It's gonna help your attitude. Well, Susan, I wanna thank you. We trust that we've said something this week that would that would help you in your everyday Christian life. That's right. We thank you for your continued financial support. We really appreciate it. Remember Jesus said, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. You should know the truth and, and the, the truth, truth will set, set you, you free.